was at the University of Washington, um, it was probably one of the most, the, the best experience I've ever had in my life. I remember enjoying college as a time of learning. And as you get into your career world, you almost forget to learn. And so I think a TEDx event like this really allows you to step back and hear the different stories and different ideas out there. And today, what I want to talk about is something that's extremely, extremely passionate for me. And that's diversity within. So I'll start with a story. Um, I was on a show called The Apprentice uh, with Donald Trump. And um, I actually was the very last guy to actually be casted in Bellevue, Washington. And I was in t-shirts and jeans at the Bellevue Square Mall. And I see a whole line of people that were dressed really, really nice. And I said, this is weird. Seattle, we don't dress up like this, right? And I went up to the line because I'm kind of a curious, adventurous guy, and you know I like living life a little vicariously. And I, I went up and said, hey, what's going on here? Because I've never seen this. And he said, well, it's the casting for The Apprentice. I said, I love that show because I love Survivor, I love Apprentice, and I love Bachelor, OK? <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> um, but I love reality TV shows, right? And so I asked them, could I try out? They said, well, you're not really dressed for it. Did you apply? Do you have a video online? I said, no, I don't, I, don't, I don't have anything. I just want to try because I want to tell my friends over dinner that I tried out for this, right? <laughs> and they said, well, that's why we should let you in? I said, yeah, why not? Um, so I actually made it in. And <laughs> I was the last person, right? Yeah. And so that actually started this very long process of six months of casting. They could do a show about the casting experience. I mean, I actually met, I had to do uh, speeches, I had to debate people, I had to meet doctors, I had to meet psychologists to be on this show, right? So what happens is I'm driving on 520, right on the bridge, and I get a call from a 310 area code number. And I thought I didn't make the show because they went through six months, I didn't get a call back or anything, and all of a sudden they said, um, this is with Mark Burnett Studios. I said, whoa, uh, what's going on? I said. I haven't heard back from you guys. And they said, can you make it to LA next week? Like LA for a whole week. And I said, sure, I can make it to LA for a week. So I go there, and for a whole week, I'm actually in a hotel room. They tell you when you could eat. They tell you when you could exercise. And I debated 50 people for a week. That's all the casting process was for that whole week. At the end of the week, there's choosing 17 people to be on the show, right? 17 because one of the persons that were on it was an Olympic athlete, and so they're only choosing 17 more. So out of the 50, the 50 people, right, I'm there, and at the very end of the week, there is a line of maybe nine producers, and they had me sit right in the middle. It was very nerve-wracking, and not as nerve-wracking as this, but it was still nerve-wracking, and they said, finally, they said, James, we have 17 great on the show, why you? And I was like, okay, this is, this is the moment, right? So I said, come on, come on with a very good answer. And I looked at them and I said, look, in six seasons, at least at that time, you've never had an Asian male on this show. <laughs> I said, I know a lot of Asian men that are in business, but you've never had one. Why? And they got a little uncomfortable. <laughs> and one guy, it's dead silent, right? One guy tips his hat above and he says, James, do you want to know the real answer? I said, yeah. And I couldn't believe this. He said, James, Asian men don't make for a good primetime television. I said, look, you know I'm Asian, right? <laughs> Asian men don't make for good primetime television. And that's when it hit me. Like, I mean, th it just hit me right in the face when I realized our society is still not ready for us all to be equal. And that's why this topic for me is extremely interesting. And I want to actually go right to the PowerPoint here and start with a quote. This is a quote by Oscar Wilde. Man is least himself in his own person. Give him a mask, and he will tell you the truth. 
Imagine this room if we all were in a mask today. We couldn't see race, we couldn't see gender, we couldn't see how we are hot or not. It doesn't matter. We're all the same. What would happen then? I think that's a very interesting question because what could happen is that the content would come out rather than looking at it from the outside. So here's a little wake-up test to start out with. How many colors are there on a Rubik's Cube? Six. University of Washington, okay. <laughs> How many individual faces are there on a Rubik's Cube? Faces. Okay, we're getting a little harder now. Come on, guys. How many faces? 54, yes, right? Nine times six is 54. Okay, now let's start with this one. Without your smartphones, if anyone gets this right, I have $50 for you, okay? If anyone gets this right. How many combinations are there on a Rubik's Cube? No smartphones. What, what, so what is it? It's 43 quintillion is the number of combinations on a Rubik's Cube. And we make our little kids do this, right? Go figure. So the question is, how do you see the world today? Do you see it in just the six colors? Or do you see it as a segmentation that our world is very diverse and unique? I'll give you one story. I went to Asia with a Caucasian gentleman who's never been there. So he told me, James, you know, give me all the etiquette, see the rules and everything. I said, well, okay, when we go to Korea, when we actually eat dinner, make sure you have everything on your food because the host is going to feel like you didn't like it then. So we go to Korea, and we have a great dinner. He eats everything. I mean, he's just a champ, does it perfectly. Then we hop on a flight to go to Beijing, and we go to another dinner, and he eats everything. And I'm like, uh-oh. The host now is getting a little nervous and brings out another big plate. And this guy is full, I could tell. He's going, and he eats again, whole plate. And then finally he goes, James, I'm sorry, I can't eat anymore, man. I said, you don't have to. He goes, you said I need to eat everything. I said, that's Korea. We're in China. The world is not simple, but we try to make it very, very simple. Um, anthropologists actually classified four major races, right? We have 195 sovereign countries, 249 country codes, but in the 1950s, finally, the UN said, we don't have four major races, we actually have 5,000 ethnic groups. We try to simplify race and diversity, and you can't. We are not all the same. We have equal rights, but we are not all the same, and once we actually acknowledge that, then I believe that we become a beautiful society because we appreciate how each one of us are very different. So here's another, uh, wow, this thing. Uh, we judge a Facebook photo in 40 milliseconds. We believe in diversity. We all preach it, we all say it, but yet we judge a photo in 40 seconds. 40 milliseconds, I'm sorry. In fact, researchers did a study where if you have a photo that makes you look like you are more extroverted, but in your bio you talk about how introverted you are, and they actually ask the person looking at it, is he or she an extrovert? They all said extrovert. People don't read people's bio anymore or the content. They judge on a simple photo. Here's another stat. I'm sure you guys are all on OK Cupid, right? OkCupid okay did an actual research study. On one side, it's a rating of a profile with text. On another one, is rating of a profile without text. And what was very interesting is that text is only 10% of what people think of you. How sad is that? We live in a society where we look at the face and we say, that's who they are. We don't actually judge on the content of who we are. What do you see here? Do you see a loving father holding a baby, or do you see a man with a tattoo holding an innocent child? <laughs> How about this one? You feel much more comfortable seeing this picture because that's what society has told us. 
we all have very, very impl implicit biases. Right? Um, they did a research study. They took 30 babies and divided them into three groups. One group were African babies with African parents. Another group, Caucasian babies with Caucasian parents. And another group was mixed babies in a mixed family. And then they actually showed pictures to these babies at a very young age to see what they would actually stare at more. The babies that were African babies with African parents stared at African pictures 40% more. Caucasians, 60% more. The equal ones were exactly the same. Exactly the same. So it's not that one is more beautiful or another. It's what we're exposed to. We have implicit biases, yet we use that as a measure of judging every single person in 40 milliseconds. What if, as I mentioned, we all had a mask on? Not this kind of mask, it's kind of freaky, but <laughs> what if we all had a mask on? How would our interactions would, would be, how would they be different? What if you walked into a classroom and you didn't get to see what people looked at, but actually you had to listen to what they thought? It could be a whole different environment if we stop using just our lens of the eyes to actually judge and make pretty much judgments of that individual and their capabilities. What if we actually took it and listened to what each individual had in their stories? I love these that I just spoke earlier, talking about her story and her mother, because that's the color that makes who we are as individuals. I have a social experience right now. That I would love for all of you guys to participate in. I don't just talk about this, I'm very serious about this even as a business. I created this app and I launched it at University of Washington last week. And what it is is called UW Social. What I want to do is see if the interactions on a social network without a picture changes how people socialize. And so we launched this and basically it's with the premise that you get to know people before you make a judgment. So it's the opposite of Tinder. It's not hot or not. <laughs> this is truly, you have to get to know people. But let me tell you some very interesting stats already. We actually built this app um, on another platform to test it on introverts. So I selected 200,000 introverts all across the nation and to test this thesis. What was really interesting was that there was 35 million icebreaker questions played when you don't get to see each other's photo. They don't get to see what they look like, but they play what's called an icebreaker, which is a game that to get to know that individual. What things do you like? What do you not like? 35 million questions answered in 200,000 people. We even got a wedding out of it. People actually got married. They dated. They met some of their best friends from it because it's forcing the action of getting to know somebody before you actually judge them. So I'm very, very passionate and serious about this topic, even so that I created this experience. And this experiment will tell me a lot about the college campus. Does the college uh, campus, is it diverse or not? Or is it a place that all of us are the same? Or is it a place that, or could it be a place where we seed the differences and actually share that in an educated manner in a great community and actually pass that on when we go to work. What I love about this audience is that you're the future that's going to be working at Microsoft, Starbucks, and so on. And you are the person that is going to bring the values from where you, what, what you learn in college to the professional market. And if we want a diverse workforce in the corporate, work, in the corporate market, I need it to start here in the college market. So this is an experience that we're doing, and you guys should all check it out. It's called UW Social. So the idea here is, can you build more authentic relationships and conversations when we don't judge on what we look like? And when we can do that, I believe that each one of us will actually find something in, in, a, in us that actually helps us to relate back to individuals in a more unique way. So you're going to find out about yourself when you do this. It's not just about finding out other people. You're going to find out about yourself. And so with that, I say diversity lives, and it's within. Thank you.